Ravel's Hot Rod Edition 1964 Ford Thunderbolt. Coming up next on Monster Hobbies, what's in the box? Hello everybody, welcome back to another exciting edition of Monster Hobbies What's in the Box when we look at the Tasca Ford Thunderbolt from 1964, the Hot Rod Edition. Now this is a cool model kit because it originally came out in 1990. I actually looked on the box <laughs> to discover the date. So this car originally was one of the awesome drag racing machines that Ford built back in the day. They took out the regular little six cylinder that they had in this thing and they jammed in a super huge 427 right into the engine bay. It's really, really cool, exciting stuff. So before we go down to where the pavement hits the road and the plastic gets revealed, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. Let's get this thing up to 100 likes so that people can find it out there in Google search land. <laughs> And now, without further ado, uh, let's go down and see what's in the box. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Welcome back once again, race car fans, to another awesome Monster Hobbies video as we unbox this task of Ford Thunderbolt by Ravel. Now, before we do that, though, let's take a look at the box itself. And if we just tilt it up here, we can say that it says the detail features right in this box. Just do a little zoom in here. Okay, check that out. Scale replica of 1960 Ford Fairlane Thunderbolt Dragster. Detailed 427 V8 racing motor. Opening hood and rotating wheels. Optional automatic or four-speed manual transmissions. Molded in maroon, clear, and plated. Authentic Tasca Ford decals. Then it says the same thing in French. All right, so let's move across here and just check out the photographs on this box art. And there's our Thunderbolt itself. And as we move across here, there's the engine bay showing that great 427 drag racing motor. And our final picture on the box here is of the back end of the car. Now, this won't quite work too well how I got the camera set up, but the side of the box is the same as the front. And there goes all the parts. Okay, so here is the other side of the box. And there we've got our side view of the Tasca Ford Thunderbolt. And then as I move this across here, it will say in English, an unassembled plastic model kit, paint and cement not included, are needed to complete model as shown. 125th scale length, seven and seven eighths inches, 20 centimeters. Pictorial instruction sheet provides assembly instructions in English for ages 10 and adult. Then it says the same in Spanish, French, and over here in Dutch. And this model came out in 1990 by Ravel. So now let's turn this around here and I will just zoom the camera back up, up and away. <laughs> Got a little off center. This is my brand new overhead camera rig. So I got this going here. Uh, some of the videos from the other 1964 stuff is not going to be using this camera tripod setup, overhead camera setup, but that's okay because we're using it now. So I'm just gonna move the bottom of the box out of the way. Uh, and now I got that shadow in there. Okay, so here we have our instruction sheet. And let's just zoom back down again. Okay, and I will move over to our top box. Okay, here we're actually where we're gonna be starting. Right there. So, as you can see, we have our colors, starting with A for aluminum, B for black, C is blue, D is metallic, E is silver, F is tan, G is white, and H is gold. And we can see our two halves of the engine going together. It's got the oil pan molded underneath, so you're gonna have to scrape your seam lines off of this and make it look really nice so that it gets painted properly. And now we'll find image number two. 
So once you get your engine block glued together, you have a choice of either the, which one is this now? Well, this is your manual transmission, and this one down here is your automatic. And you do get a starter. The starter motor will go to either one. And then there's your engine block there. So you do have choices with this instruction sheet uh, for your engine. Okay, so now we get into, there's the intake manifold and your right and left, um, yes, valves. And the valve covers, or the rocker covers. These are your cylinder heads in there. Uh, moving over to number four, we get the nice carburetors, two four barrels, the distributor, and an oil filler with the cap on the top. And then we get into number five. Here, maybe I'll do both at the same time. So number five shows the, the water pump going on here. And this is our oil filter and the coil up here glues into the front of the big block. Then you have a header tank, uh, sorry, your alternator, your fan belt, and the fan. And now we get into the magic of hooking this up into your frame. And here you, the horn glues right down here. Now when they made this car for real, the original uh, Ford's they had a six cylinder underneath the hood and this was like a monstrous drag racing motor that they stuffed in here. So they had to make a lot of modifications underneath just to fit this thing in properly. Here you have your torsion bar up front, as they call it in the instruction sheet. Uh, these are the headers that you have to weed through in here, just like they did with the real car. They do have right and left for each side so right and left a left hand side, right and left a right hand side. There's a little crossover pipe that connects the two underneath. Then we get into our front suspension here and they give you a nice little illustration of this hooking in. So you hook it in the front and then rotate it to the back and there it is there. Now here's our exhaust pipes going on to our chassis. Whoops, camera's having a little trouble here. Okay, there we go. So there's a chassis and the exhaust pipe going on here. And there should be another one to go on the other side. Okay. And now we have our under chassis here. These are the springs and the rear axle. There's a differential case for the differential and a drive shaft to hook the motor to the rear wheels. And now coming over to number 13, you've got your your shock absorbers going in here. Um, here's your rear cross member for the frame, or the subframe. Then we have our wheels going in, uh, image number 15 here. You get some skinnies up front and some big large slicks in the back, typical for a drag racer. Then here are your wheels, and they pop in on these little uh, axles with the little button on them. So the button locks the wheel into place. And then here we have our interior. So the interior is a bucket in this one. It's got a separately molded dashboard, tachometer, your gas and brake pedal. You brake off the shifter on here, the console shifter. There's your steering wheel with the turn signal lights going off there. And of course your manual gear shift down below. Now this is the optional bit for your dashboard. You can break off this pedal here if you're using the automatic. Okay, so now... That's interesting that you glue the seats in after you glue all the dashboard components. The seats have front and backs, they're buckets. And then here we have underneath with the body upside down, there is the dome light glowing, gluing into the roof. You've got separated windows front and back, and you even have your sun visors right in there. And now we get into here. This is sub-assembly number 20. 
For assembly step number 20, you have a rear view mirror that's going dead center between your sun visors and your side no draft windows, followed by your regular side windows. There's your interior clicking into the body. And of course here we have in the engine compartment, uh, in your inner splash fender aprons, you're going to put in these front springs. This is for the typical Ford F suspension style. So these springs are going to go on top of your upper and lower A-arms on your suspension. There's your radiator, and these are inner panels to glue in there and there. And now looking at image 23, this is how you lock your body in. You're going to have to maneuver the tops of these springs in as this is coming down, just so that you get it accurately in there. Then in number 24 and 25, we've got our headlights going into the grill. These are actually intake screens on the inner ones, and they're using the single beam headlights because they needed cooling into that engine compartment. Then here it glues on the front bumper and you've got your parking lights on there. And we move over to image 26. This is, you're painting all these details with silver or using bare metal foil. There's your rear bumper. So now in image 26, we've got the rear of the car, and there's your rear bumper and your rear red taillight lenses going into the back. And then we move down to image 23 and 20, or 27 and 28, sorry. Your door handles gluing into the body. Then here we have the tower brackets, which will connect the two springs. And there's your master cylinder for your brakes, which you gotta weave in underneath here. Then we get into this great big air cleaner arrangement, as well as your windshield wipers. So there's your air intakes and the air box and the two windshield wipers. And we're almost done here. Then we have image 31 showing the hood and the hood pins and the chrome trim that goes underneath. And then you carefully got to pinch these together as you pop this into place. Let go and it'll spring back out. And then here we have, just got to zoom back a little. Back. <laughs> Camera's upside down to what I'm used to. Okay. All right, so here we have the decal placement and Again, they're showing silver, but this would be better with bare metal foil. There's a little bit of black paint inside the, the spear here. And there's your decal location for right and left hand side. All right, so now let's go over and see what the plastic parts look like. So the first aspect we're gonna take a look at is of course the body. Now I got my camera pointing straight up and down, so this is gonna be a totally different way of doing these videos from here out. Anyway, you can see the excellent detail. Just bring this up to the camera. The body is molded in the Thunderbolt Maroon, which was one of the colors that they used back in the day. I've got the hood on here. Now you can see some white marks around here. I think back in the day I was going to polish the plastic on this body and uh, didn't really do too well in removing the wax. So there's our hood right there. And as you can see, there's some nice detail, nice vent work in there. If we turn it upside down, there are some marks here that you can see where we're gonna have to remove those with our number 16 hobby blade. These are the mold marks, but quite a nice detail here. Of course, there's no uh, under hood mat like on other kits. There is, however, the inside of these grills 
for the vent for our teardrop shape hood. So I'm just moving this out of the way for a minute. And getting back into the underneath of the body here, you can see these beautifully molded top of the uh, spring towers, which are in there. It is a little bit smooth and simplistic in here, but then that big motor is going to take all that space up. So there's the inside of our roof for the interior. You can see there are some ribs in here for upholstery. You will have to get rid of these mold marks, which are in inconvenient places. Uh, not too sure if there's anything they can really do about mold marks. Now we get into the back here. Half my wax has actually enabled you to see where it says Ford on there, <laughs> which is kind of slick, I guess. But anyway, all in all, this body is very nice, very nicely detailed. And of course, there's our hood there. All right, so now we're looking at our nice chassis under here. And one thing you'll notice is that this has subframes to it. In the 1960s was a time for car experimentation. So a lot of them were using this unibody style undercarriage, especially on the smaller cars, because it saved weight from using the big frames from before. So now we have subframes. So the back part of the frame goes here, kicks out, goes along the, the uh, rocker panels here and here, then comes back in and finishes off the subframe for the engine. So you're actually looking at two little frames connected by the outer rails. So keeping that in mind, we'll just take a look at the detail on here. As you can see, it's got some nice impressions underneath for the steel. This is how it would actually be from the factory. That maroon color again. <laughs> you can see the copyright manufacturer's name, Ravel 1990. There you go, right there. And uh, look at that great detail on that fuel tank. And as we turn this over, you can see there isn't really any detail here at all. There are some rings in there for where your springs are going to mount in that uh, Ford suspension. And really, there's nothing back here at all. Um, yeah, so that is the underbody. All right, here's the engine block so far. Now, I did glue this together. And it looks like I glued the intake manifold on. Uh, here's our chrome valve covers and our two du or four barrel carburetors. And then here we have our transmission. Now if I just turn this to the side here, just to face the camera a little better. There. You can see that this is a transmission with the uh, manual transmission with the linkages in here. And then if you look at our engine here, it's got all the right, like the frost plugs in the engine block and a bunch of good features. Now there's where your transmission is going to glue once I paint the transmission aluminum here. And uh, yeah, <laughs> there's our motor mounts there. So as you can see, it's a quite a nicely detailed motor. And like I was saying before, there's your your transmission pan is part of the actual engine. And I've carefully removed the seam lines before I painted this thing with the blue paint. Now before I get into the interior components and all of that stuff, I thought I would actually show some of the parts sprues that I haven't worked on. Because like I said, I was actually doing something with this car and then I kind of ran into some other things I had to do instead. So this is one of the frames I've got here that has not been touched yet. So here we have that that uh, sub member. There's a distributor cap, the horn, the rear differential and springs. So you can see how this is just a one piece, which does save a lot of time and fiddling trying to glue that together. There's our belts and pulleys. These are those inner panels. There's your exhaust in four pieces. Drive shaft. Uh, what else we got here? That's the oil and the coil. Oil filter and coil, sorry. There's the front of our differential cover. Uh, I think that is the front water pump. There's our suspension for the front piece and our little overflow radiator tank right there. 
All right, so I just kind of laid these two pieces of sprue down here side by side. I think at one point these were attached. I, I think I clipped them so they'd fit better in the box. Anyway, so here are some more of the suspension components. There's that front crossbar. These are the mounts on the top of our um, spring towers. There's our steering column, the gear pedals. Okay, remove some parts in here. I think that's the oil filler right there. There's our springs for the front and our coiled up shock absorbers in the rear. And here we have our automatic transmission sitting right there. All right, so there's some more pieces missing out of this parts tree. I do have this one here. There's our four wheels and our radiator support with those air intakes, which lead into these. Uh, there's a steering wheel. There is a single exhaust pipe. Now, I think probably on the Thunderbolts to make them <laughs> street legal, <laughs> they did have this hooked up somehow. I, I'm not sure how it would have worked. Anybody that actually owned one is free to write in the comments how this single exhaust pipe worked or if it was just there for show for, you know, legals when the police pulled you over. I don't know. And then there's a tiny part here. I'm not sure what that is. I mentioned it in the instructions. If you know what that is, let me know in the comments below. Anyway, uh, that's it for this tree here. All right, so now we have our nicely molded bucket seats here. I have glued the backs on these just because I was trying to build this, as I said. There's our dashboard here. It looks like there's a little tack or tachometer or something underneath here. But uh, yeah, you can see the nice detailing in our um, instrument gauges, uh, as well as a little glove box there. Now keep in mind, this was a regular civilian type car that they modified for the drag strip. So all this would have been pretty lightweight for the car itself. Now the next piece we have is our interior bucket, or the tub. As you can see, it's actually quite smooth in here. There is no uh, little mounting locations for those bucket seats. So you just have to adjust them in here when they go in. Nice detail on the seat cushions themselves. If you just turn this this way, you'll see that the interior actually has some door panel moldings onto it. Let's see. <laughs> Trying to get used to this camera setup. Okay, we, there we go. There. You can see the detail on the inner door panels. And again, this being red, get some interesting effects going on. There's some uh, mold marks here, which have to be kind of taken out with your number 16 hobby blade. And a few on the back here on the package shelf. So just be aware of those when you're trying to build this thing. Now we get into my favorite part, which of course is the chrome tree. Now here we have some nice Krager mag wheels that come with the kit, as well as a chrome air cleaner and a couple little bits and pieces here and there, which are quite nice. Now this is the other part of the chrome tree. There's the chrome for the hood, the chrome fan, a bunch of components here. There's a mirror. Uh, the windshield wiper blades are in there. Now you'll notice there's a bunch of missing spots in here. It's because those are the chrome bumpers and whatnot and I've actually uh, cut them out to see how they fit on the body. And next up we have our rear bumper and grill insert with little spots for your tail lights. And here's the front grill, which would be really nice with a bit of a wash in here, just to bring out the grill highlights. And if you notice here, there is a hole and that's for the air intakes. So this will actually work as a proper functioning Thunderbolt grill. And then here I just gotta move this in with my hands here. There's that front bumper. And you can see that the chrome on this is really quite nice indeed. So now here's a nice view of the wheels that I want to use. These of course are Keystone mag wheels that came with the kit. And here I'm just showing that you get a front mag wheel, the tire, and of course the rear backing plate with the hole that clicks onto the axles. Now, I do believe these are Mickey Thompson slicks. You can see the nice pie detail, the pie plate or whatever they call that, back in the day. And of course this is uh, 
reminiscent of those really cool 60s drag tires. Now I've sanded the edges of these tires off. Used to have a drill press. It, uh, drill press chuck broke on me, but I was able to sand these a while ago. And uh, they do look quite a lot nicer. Got our front tires sanded down as well. And you can see the great detail on these. Okay, next up we have our glass components. Here's our side windows. The front windshield with the sun visors, headlights, parking lamps, there's some more circular light things here. Okay, there's your rear window and the two no drafts. Next up we have the tail lights, which are really simple. They're just little bullet ends, which were quite common for the uh, 1964 Ford Falcon. And last but not least, we have our decal sheet with Tasca Ford in nice gold with the little white writing underneath. And Barlow Racing Oil, or Bard Hall, sorry, Racing Oil. SS, Super Sport 77, Bill Lawton, and John Healy as well. So you can build a couple of different ones. And you got the Thunderbolt there and your Hearst Shifter decals, as well as many others. And this is a nice, nice sheet for your car. And that concludes our review of the Ravel 1964 Tasca Ford Thunderbolt. Well, I hope you enjoyed this awesome review of the Tasca Ford Thunderbolt from 1964, the Hot Rod Edition model kit that was made in 1990. Woo! Wasn't that cool? Of course it was cool. All right, so next week we've got another exciting car coming up here, so don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. A pound that notification button so that every time I make a new video, you are the first one to know about it. Uh, so... <laughs> Let's get this video up to 100 likes. I have to remember what I just said. Anyway, until next time, everybody, happy model building.